great. And uh, Yanni, the stage is floor. Is All right, so uh, you didn't tell me it's going to be recorded, so I have to be careful what I'm going to say, because it's going to stay there. Huh? <laughs> okay, I, can, uh, so. I can change it. I, I know how to code for deep learning, machine learning, and stuff like that. All right, okay. Deep fake. So, um, firstly, I'd like to thank everybody for joining. Um, it is the first time that I'm presenting on the GDG from inside my room. So it is uh, something, you know, that we are adapting to as well. So, um, okay, um, let me share my screen initially so that I um, begin my presentation. Uh, my entire screen. All right, so you should see copies of yourselves now, normally. Right? Um, and I'm going here. Right. So um, I don't know. Uh, can you verify that you uh, see my Everything screen correctly? Okay. Yes, yes. Uh, all right. So um, my name is Ioannis Santakis. Um, as you can see from my mail, <laughs> this is my name, my mail, and my website, all in one. Uh, if you have any um, any reasons to uh, need um, further clarifications, feel free to contact me at my email and I will be more than happy to answer any questions. Now, all right, so um, the reason we are here is uh, about the next step that is going forward from being a developer to being hired. So in order to get hired, what do you need? Firstly, uh, don't worry, uh, I will uh, uh, copy paste all the links to the related material that I present here, I will copy paste it, so don't panic, okay? You will get everything. So, firstly, in order to make this transition, what do we need? All right, firstly, we need a resume or a CV, okay, that stands out, all right? So, you need to make the very first impression so that uh, the technical recruiter will get back to you or will reach you by themselves at the first place, all right? Now, <clears throat> Something that it's not necessary, but it always helps, is to be active on few networks. For example, you should have a LinkedIn profile. It helps a lot. It's not a necessity, but it's something that is definite big bonus, okay? Now, if uh, you are in the um, tech world, you would also need a GitHub account, okay? So that you present some of your projects and some of your abilities uh, through code uh, recruiters do look at it a lot. Now, another thing, not many people do it, uh, but it's a good thing, uh, is if you have some Medium articles, right? If you write articles at medium.com, it's, it's a good plus because you present that, um, you know, everybody loves life learning when it comes to tech companies. And if you can present that you can become an advocate of their products somehow, it's a good thing to do. So, uh, the number two is not necessary, all in number two, but they are good bonuses. And of course, if uh, you, they ring your bell, you should be prepared for that interview. Now, when it comes to the resume or your CV, if you like, to be even contacted by a recruiter, you need to first have a resume that will draw their attention. All right? Now, your resume needs to be short, Okay, because they won't spend more than six seconds uh, scanning with their eyes your CV, and it to be, needs to be precise for the job you are targeting at. So, if you're like a person that want to target two different sections in the tech world, have two different resumes. Okay, so your resume should be um, job specific. All right. Now, you in six seconds. This is a very good um, article, which I'm going to paste. I mean, you can take a picture of my screen if you like with your cell phone right now, or you can just wait for the links, they will come anyway. This is a very good article that shows how you can transition from uh, to, to a six second uh, resume. And when I say six seconds, something that within six seconds, 
uh, by scanning your resume, your recruiter will have a good idea for you, so they won't ditch your resume. Now, let's get to the point, which is the actual interview. So, uh, you did all that, and finally, uh, you get an email where you did the application, you never expect that you will get any, <laughs> any voice back, and then you get an email that says, hey, we want to uh, see you, uh, we want to see more of you. So, this is the time you panic. So uh, you need to be prepared, otherwise you will regret being contacted by the recruiter because even though the hardest thing is to make them talk to you, then you need to be prepared for the next step. So, firstly, you will, uh, what happened to me at Google? All right, so I got my resume and the, um, I got contacted by uh, a, a Google um, uh, recruiter, okay? So the first thing, when I received my email, we arranged when we are going to have our first meeting, okay? So when we talk. Now, the first thing that you do is initially a screening with uh, the technical recruit via phone or Google Meet. Then, if things uh, go well, you get a technical interview with a Google engineer via Google Meet and um, have some technical discussion, all right? So this is a, your first coding technical interview that is still remote. You still do it from inside your room. Now, if this goes well as, as well, uh, then you go to part three, which consists of, yes, five consecutive on-site interviews at Google Office. And um, the parts two and three are the hardest parts, okay? And especially three, it's very, very, um, you will need some Xanax. So, what happens in these five consecutive interviews? Well, you, what I had to deal with was initially past three algorithmic interviews. Then, I had to deal with one systems design interview, and finally, one Googliness and leadership interview. Uh, we will get to all this. However, what you need to know is that the algorithmic interviews that we will talk about later is uh, they examine your ability to solve algorithmic problems, okay? The systems design interview has to do with um, things like design uh, YouTube. So to design YouTube, what would I need to do? How would I set up my entire system? How I would uh, set up my servers? all the things in order to say that I, I am making a system that can host um, um, YouTube, for example, or um, Google Earth, all right? The final Googliness and leadership interview is the only one that doesn't require any skills, but it requires your personality, which shows how much of a, a team player you are, okay, and how much of a person that uh, can interact with uh, other programmers, all right? So these are the on-site interviews, the, and they are consecutive. They start from morning till evening. You're the entire day inside there, all right? So <coughs> let's talk about the technical interviews. Now, the recipe is usually the same for every role. And when I say for every role, I mean for every role and in every company. So, uh, so what we will talk about doesn't apply just to Google, but it also applies to Amazon, Microsoft, IBM, you name it. Okay, so um, the, the recipe is the same when it comes to problem solving. Some things might differ, like a company might not have five consecutive interviews like Google did, or even Google by now, they might have changed the way they do it. But that's how they did it until at least last year. All right, so the recipe is similar. Now, you need to spend a lot of time in solving algorithmic problems. You need to re become really good at it, okay? So uh, you don't just uh, consider yourself a good coder and go into a technical interview. You need to practice, and we will talk about practicing uh, very shortly. Now, um, when you are inside a technical interview, you should speak out loud your thoughts. Whatever you think, you shouldn't just write something. It is bad impression. You should so show that you can collaborate, that uh, you are thinking positively, 
okay? And you should unroll your thinking. Even if you fail your interview, the unrolling of your thinking is more important than you can possibly imagine. Now, you should also ask questions for clarifications and not just jump to coding. It's not, not just unrolling, as I said, your thoughts, but also you should ask questions. I mean, when I ask you an algorithmic problem, you should say, what is the base case? Should we do this? Should we do that? Do you mean this? Do you mean that? So you, you should show that you're trying to absorb everything and that you can communicate. All right? So uh, the last two bullets are a, a big part of uh, passing your uh, technical interview. You should speak and ask. Now, and also, the last thing, you need Xanax. Lots of Xanax. All right? I didn't use Xanax and I regretted it. <laughs> so, um, all right, so let's, let's look at this in a little bit more detail. So let's start with the screening, all right? So the screening part, which is the, the first contact that you have with your um, technical recruiter. So your technical recruiter is your basic contact. It's the person that uh, will take you through all phases. Your technical recruiter will tell you that you made it to the next phase and you made it to the even next phase that you passed, that you didn't pass. It's your contact. And even if you don't pass your technical uh, interview at the first time, you should keep some good contact with your technical recruiter because you could very well avoid sending new CVs and stuff. You could contact your technical recruiter and say, hey, you remember me? You told me that we should meet again next year, okay? So keep a good contact with your technical recruiter, right? This is your contact. Um, now, at the first uh, meeting with uh, the technical recruiter, there is a non-technical discussion. I mean, um, this person will normally reach you and try to see your motive motivations, uh, your enthusiasm, okay, um, whether or not your CV matches what um, your actual background and stuff, okay. So, as I said, uh, here we'll uh, check whether your CV reflects the real you, um, talk about experience, goals, etc. You should be relaxed, polite and modest. Don't try to play smart because um, Technical recruiters have seen many smart, smart people, okay? So you should be modest, but you should also show that you're passionate and that you have motivations and goals, all right? Now, if everything goes well and the um, technical recruiter believes that uh, is happy with you, uh, will uh, then promote you to the second phase. And the second phase is you're actually your first actual interview with a Google engineer where you are required to solve your first coding problem. All right, so this happens usually via Google Meet or other platform. It was Google Meet in my case. Now, um, you will need to write code on an IDE without autocompletion, all right? So you will use an IDE that does not autocomplete. You have to write everything from inside your head the way you think it, okay? Now, surprise, um, this IDE um, is usually a shared Google Doc. You know, when you share a Google document with somebody, when this somebody types something, you see it on the other end. So that's what happened in my case. I was given a shared uh, Google Doc with the question, and um, I was told, okay, start typing and talk to me as you type. So uh, this is what happens usually at the first interview, which is remote from inside your home. So uh, after that, you will might also be asked a few technical questions regarding the role you're applying at. So uh, if you're applying for, a, let's say, an Android developer role, um, after this um, uh, first uh, coding but you might be asked a few questions regarding uh, some uh, uh, Android-related uh, uh, questions. Like, um, tell me, for example, like uh, about the architectural components. So what would you use in that case? What would you do? And so on, all right? So um, that's one of the things. This is the first part. Then 
you will wait and about a couple of weeks later maybe or so that was in my case i got contacted by my recruiter who was my contact to tell me congratulations you did very well and we are very happy to invite you to our office in london for our on-site interviews now uh, so you get the email for the on-site interviews marathon all right now so as i said the recruiter gives you the good news and you will set the date for the on-site interviews. Um, you will be provided some additional resource about what to study so that you prepare yourself, okay? And I mean, they will tell you mostly, okay, that you will be having five interviews, this will be the subject of the interviews, it will be three um, technical, it will be one, uh, one Googliness, it will be one systems design, um, take a, a look at HackerRank and other sites and so on, all right? So you will, they will give you some time if you request it to be prepared for the on-site interviews part, all right? Now, after that, you will arrange with uh, a company, uh, with a travel company, uh, your uh, transport, uh, maybe if you are not, if it's, if it's not local to where you live, to the Google office where you're going, where you have applied it, okay? So uh, that, that's it. Then you come to the on-site interviews day, which is a marathon, as I said, okay? Now, initially you will have two interviews, at, at least what was in my schedule, okay? So two consecutive interviews. Then you have a lunch with a Googler. And note that this is also part of your interview. Even though it's informal, it still counts as part of your interview, even the lunch that you have. Because um, you will talk with somebody, this somebody will um, see you as a personality, okay? So it, it is part of the interview. It is graded, your lunch time, okay? It's not just a lunch break. Um, then you get the final three interviews, okay? So uh, it is a five-hour interview, total uh, marathon. Now. Uh, you will express and mostly, especially when we talk about the um, technical interviews part with the coding interviews, you will have a whiteboard where, where you will express your thoughts and you will do your schematics you know, while you ask questions and on. And when you're about to start writing code, you won't write it on the whiteboard that's as it was used to be. Uh, you will code your algorithm on a Chromecast without auto completion again. All right, so we will be given a PC, a Chromecast uh, a laptop, and you will uh, start typing what you have. While you type, um, your um, uh, interviewer will see on a screen, uh, on a big screen, what you type. So uh, they will see how you unroll all your thoughts with code. Okay, so that's how it is. Now, that's the story. But how do we prepare for that? I mean, now this is already some very good um, background that you have because you know what you are dealing with uh, and what magnitude and so on. But um, all right, so you told me what we do. How how do I get ready about this? All right, so you will get to choose firstly about your uh, algorithms, the language at which you're going to be tested. So let's assume that you choose Java. Okay. All right, so that's at least what I chose, okay? I chose Java, all right? But the thing is the same in every language. Now, ah, by the way, even if you uh, are selected for a different uh, language, okay? So let's say it was Kotlin, for example, you can still choose Java because they don't test you on Android, they test you on algorithms. And you simply say, I want to be tested on Python or I want to be tested on Java, even though I apply for a Kotlin role, right? So uh, you get to choose uh, what you are, uh, the, the language to be tested with. And um, if you choose Java, for example, you need to be very, very, very comfortable with the Java collections library. And that's mostly all you need to be uh, doing, okay? And equivalently with uh, any other collections library in uh, another language, because you're literally going to be working merely with data structures. So since you're going to be working with data structures and algorithms, all you're going to do is uh, using the Java Collections Library. So be, be very proficient with it, 
okay um be very good with the java collections okay so um now what skills you need to revise well first first and foremost you need to be very comfortable with a big o notation uh, be able to understand how well or how bad an algorithm performs right and we usually grade uh, the performance of our algorithm with the big o notation right so uh, be very uh, comfortable with that um, make sure that you have no gaps when it comes to big o or big theta but uh, just forget about big theta and stuff big o all right then uh, data structures all right as i said you should be already comfortable with the java collections package but you should also um be very very well um have uh, very well studied data structures all right so you should start with uh, arrays and linked lists as these are the building blocks for any other data structure okay any data structure that we know consists of either linked lists or um, arrays okay so uh, uh be very good with data structures study about trees heaps uh graphs anything that um you can uh think of when it comes to uh algorithms and data structures breadth for search depth for search and so on sorting algorithms anything that has to do with algorithms basically all right so be very good with data structures um study uh, sorting algorithms even though i don't think they will ask you to for, for example please code um quick sort i haven't seen anybody asking that but uh it's part of the material that uh, google gave me as well and they told me please be uh very good on uh, sorting algorithms okay um and also uh, the thing that uh, most uh, uh developers hate is recursion you might uh, need to solve uh, various different problems in a recursive manner. So uh, be uh, well prepared with recursion. There is a uh, thing in coding bat. Uh, there is um, uh, too many, too many questions, uh, too, too many problems to practice on recursion. And it is uh, in coding bat, especially, it's very good. So um, then uh, you should, uh, once you're uh, comfortable with uh, being, uh, uh, you know, okay with uh, data structures, uh, algorithms, and stuff. Then, then you need to start practicing different algorithmic problems. Okay, and uh, luckily for you, uh, there are various sites that can help you with practice on algorithmic problems. All right, so there are sites that will help you prepare, and these are the preparation sites that I would. Uh, suggest uh, you use there are many 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 uh, these are the ones that I have highlighted and I would suggest not to um, be prepared in a hundred different sites because you will just uh, uh, you know lose your time try to focus on two three four sites no more right so um, here are the resources for your next step in your career algoexpert.io this is in my opinion, and I'm not promoting any of this, uh, one of the most uh, complete sets of um, preparation side. I mean, uh, this preparation side will prepare you for algorithms. I mean, there are about 120 algorithmic problems in there uh, where you can code them online on their ID and uh, you are given hints. You can choose the language at which to do it. You can see various different solutions and there are also videos that explain the solution, the different solutions for each algorithmic problem. So even if you don't understand something, you can uh, watch it and you can see first the video where it unrolls the way that it will be solved and then the code as well. So it is a very, very good resource. And by the way, one of the uh, questions that um, I got, which I'm not allowed, of course, to, to reveal, um, I was found inside that site okay so it was within those uh, uh, questions uh, now other than uh, the algo expert which is a very good site there is also the interview cake both the algo expert io and the interview cake com they are both uh paid services okay uh, you will have to pay for both of them oh by the way 
uh, let me say something about Algo Expert before I move on. Algo Expert is not just a site that will prepare you for your uh, next technical interview. It will also prepare you for your systems design interview, as it contains crash courses on. Uh, it contains firstly crash course on uh, algorithms. It contains a uh, crash course on uh, systems design. It contains the um, algorithmic questions with the solutions that I was talking about. And it also contains mock uh, interviews on system design. So for example, Design YouTube, it contains a 45 minute talk of somebody unrolling how they would design YouTube, for example, okay? So this is a, a very good uh, resource. To me, it's uh, the, the first thing that you should check. Uh, it, uh, you will have to pay for it, but it is worth the money, the investment, if you uh, decide to make your next step. Now, as I said, the interview cake is also another paid service. It's very good. Lead code. Now, lead code is also paid service. I think it's around $35 per month, something like that. It's not very expensive, but it comes with a monthly payment. Uh, it is also containing hundreds of algorithmic problems with solutions and uh, with um, um, discussions about each solution by anyone who has joined. But also, it contains about every question, uh, how many times it has been reported by what company. So you will see, for example, an algorithmic question that says that this has been asked like 100 times in Google, 20 times in Facebook, and it has been reported five times in Microsoft. So if you see that, um, you know, for example, a company like Google and you're applying for Google um, asks many times this question, it has been stated several times, it is something that you, it's good to look at, okay? So lead code is another very, very good service, very worth paying for. And uh, it also has, uh, you know, uh, it also shows you how much um, each question is um, likely to appear in some of the companies that are reported that. Uh, and of course, HackerRank, it's a free and um, it is uh, the, the best free choice in uh, my belief uh, to uh, practice your coding skills, all right? Now, uh, other than uh, this, the sites that will show you about preparation, how you will prepare, there are also the uh, video tutorials and courses, all right? So, um, Good, all right, I want to um, practice my algorithmic test, but I have no idea about graphs and about uh, Johnson sim matrices and so on. How, what would I do? Okay, all right, so how can I practice something I don't know? This is the video tutorials part that I am about to show now. Now, Barry Gustavs, uh, sorry, Gurab Sense, Gurav sends a um, system design at YouTube video list, okay? Uh, I will paste the links here. Uh, this is a, a very good uh, systems design um, alternative to the uh, Algo Experts videos that uh, is included uh, with uh, your subscription. And it's free because it's at YouTube. Derek Banas, uh, Java Algorithms course on YouTube. It's also free because it's on YouTube and it's very, very good and mature. Um, uh, Sesh uh, Van Gopal's uh, data structures and algorithms on YouTube, it's also free, especially when you want to work with adjacency uh, symmetries and uh, graphs and stuff like that. This was the best on the graphs uh, part of uh, this one. Uh, now, Abdul Bari, to my opinion, Abdul Bari is one of the most gifted uh, speakers of all time when it comes to uh, this kind of thing. So he has a free course on YouTube, uh, Abdul Bari's Algorithms. It's the most comprehensible um, video series that you can watch out of, it, of all that we are talking about here. Now, he is very good. He's so good that I will also talk to you about Abdul Bari's Udemy course, Mastering Data Structures and Algorithms Using C and C++. And don't worry if uh, you are targeting some different language. Forget about it. It's still good for any language. Even if you go for Python, forget that it's for C and C++, okay? It will give you all that you need to know about doing things correctly, okay? 
And now uh, there is the Andre Neagoy's uh, Udemy course, Master the Coding Interview, Data Structures and Algorithms. This is um, very target specific, it targets uh, the interviews. Okay, it's very good. It's also on Udemy. And of course, let's not forget Udacity. Okay, so we have Udacity's algorithms and data structures nano degree. It's one of the nano degrees that I graduated um, last March. Uh, it's uh, worth, uh, I, I've, I've done it. Everything that I've put here, I have uh, followed. Okay, um, the Udacity nano degree, okay, you might have to pay for a nano degree, but I will tell you that it's worth every penny. Uh, I have graduated from it. It's it's really good. Now, um, that's all I had to say when it comes to uh, my uh, experience and uh, the sources that um, I wanted to share with you. Now, if you don't mind, I will stop presenting so that I start uh, pasting uh, some of the links that. Um, I, I, about I have earlier. already pasted everything. Don't worry about that. Everything is on the chat. Um, one second. Let me look at it. <laughs> um, one second. Let me get to the chat. Um, all right. All right. So, uh, OK. I, I, if you don't mind, Elias, I will paste it with the links. OK, uh, even better. So, so uh, that, that's the reason. So. Um, one second, let me get this here. All right, so we, we start with uh, the uh, CV thing. Um, it is, um, I think you have uh, pasted that already. Okay, you in six seconds. Uh, it's, um, then we have the uh, Websites, Algo Expert, Interview Cake, Lead Code, and uh, HackerRank, uh, which, as I said, is are very worth. Uh, then we said that we have the Paravsense uh, System Design. Okay, and here is the link. We have uh, Derek Banas, uh, Java Algorithms course on YouTube. More data structures, such as Bangopal. We have the truly amazing Abdul Baris algorithms on YouTube and Abdul Baris Udemy course. And um, also, we have the Andre Neogis Udemy course about um, data structures and algorithms. And finally, we also get the Udacity Nano Degree on um, data structures and algorithms, which I also paste now. These are the links I had to share. Uh, I hope um, you can, um, you know, open all these in uh, different apps on your PCs and just, you know, book bookmark them after we finish this uh, um, talk. So um, this is the kind of things that I wanted to share with you. I hope I didn't waste your time or you don't feel your time wasted somehow. Um, and I don't know if I finished uh, earlier than I uh, expected. No worry. No? We have, we have no, time. Okay. It's a, you are on time. Uh, for sure, I'm not going to apply for an engineer role in uh, Google after your uh, talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and now we have our first question from uh, Andreas Mularoyanis. Andreas, let me open the chat. Um, Andrea, please okay. unmute yourself, and if you want, also turn on the video and ask directly Yanis. Okay, camera is on, but you are un, uh, you are still muted, Andrea. Uh, if you cannot talk, then why not just uh, type your question? I will be more than happy to see if I if I can answer it. Okay. Okay, maybe he's tapping. So let's go to the next one. 
Uh, George Corsaridis is going to ask you something. George, please unmute yourself and turn yeah. on the video. Great. Hello. Hi, Jens. Hello. How are you? Hi, Jorgo. Long Hi. time no see. <laughs> yeah, long time no see. Well, actually, I am. I have a couple of questions, and I am a bit uh, panicked because I did apply for a job at Google. I did pass the first phase. And now I am waiting to start the second phase. <laughs> Congratulations. So, so you yeah. are giving the good news that you pass for the on-site yes. interviews? No, not the on-start, uh, not the on-site, the, the, the first uh, call. Ah, OK, the, the, uh, the remote one, OK. Yeah, the remote one. So pretty much like the last week uh, what, has what, been What is like... the uh, position you applied for, Android? Uh, Android developer and uh, developer Great. relations. Yeah, right, one of the yeah. two. All right. Uh, okay. So yeah, like uh, the past week has been just a full on studying on data structures, data structures, data structures, data structures. What, what, uh, what language did you pick? Uh, Kotlin. Kotlin. Yeah, Kotlin. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay uh so yeah i'm trying to pretty much uh, remember all these things and so you know, all you have to do is uh, be very proficient with the um collections library okay mm -hmm, I'm, mm -hmm. when, when i say proficient i mean really proficient okay uh there shouldn't be any method or class that you shouldn't be aware of okay when it yeah, comes to yeah to these because these will be your uh building blocks yeah, to, yeah all uh, tools. anything that you will actually code Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anything that you will code, you will use the collections library. So be very. Uh, there are some shortcut methods and some shortcut static classes. Oh yeah, stuff, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah. but uh, you know about copying uh, parts of arrays and stuff, which you can I'm, just I'm, do there I'm, instead I'm, of I already have code. like a tit a tit -tit of uh, all of these <laughs> methods, tit -tit. Okay. like yeah, right. okay. building while well, I'm so, studying. So around your uh, camera uh, at your PC, there should be yeah, know, like right paper behind paper. the yeah. camera. This, 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 this. So you look around. <laughs> yeah. by... Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. Uh, so, so I actually want to ask <laughs> you about the last part of the interview, like the last technical part. You said it was like a systems design thing. All right. Uh, about the first interview. Uh, no, 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 no. The first interview or the okay. The, Let me the, tell you something. As I said, the first the interview last... will contain a coding uh, question or two. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You might start with a warm up question. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then with a main. Or if it takes more time, they will just uh, stay at the warm-up question. And then there yeah. is a question uh, regarding the role. As I said, you will be asked a few things about Android itself. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. for example, something I don't know, maybe about the view model or so something that trends now. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, the second part. Uh, what is your question about the second part? Uh, so you said that uh, on the on-site interviews, like assuming I ever get there, there was some sort of systems design question? Yes, yes. I, so, I put the two links here. I, I put a link from... Uh, <clears throat> the first link that I put was from uh, Garab Sen, who has, as I said, a YouTube series about talking about systems design. But um, also you can check AlgoExpert.io uh, and uh, you, you can either purchase the um, uh, coding uh, package or the systems design package or both. Okay. okay. Uh, the systems design package contains a, a very, very awesome crash course on the systems design, okay, um, which you can... Um, you will literally uh, see that there are several things that you were not aware of. <laughs> okay, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure there are. Um, uh, I, will, I will tell you what. I will tell you why. When I went to Google, and one of the reasons that I didn't uh, get uh, from the first time, and they told me uh, the recruiter with whom I have kept a good relationship with told me mm -hmm. to do it this year again was the systems design because I uh, I was accepted. I was unaware about it. I was in the pitfall that, as I said, that you feel unlucky that you got selected because you say, oh, damn, I'm not prepared. Okay. So mm -hmm. I spent all my time uh, doing algorithmic um, 
quizzes, okay? So I was uh, solving algorithmic problems all day long, okay? Uh, to try to get, you know, to, to get the hang of it. And okay. uh, I didn't uh, do almost anything on, when it comes to the systems design. And I was asked a question, I cannot say the question, but I was asked a question and um, to, to design the SAM system. And uh, for that uh, thing, I, I thought that they were asking me, since I was applying for an Android role, to make the Android app. And the yeah. interviewer didn't stop me. They didn't say, no, 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 I mean, the, that's the entire design, the entire system, the, the, ser the services, the uh, servers, how you would do caching, how you would do, that, that's the kind of things you do at systems design, right? So he just mm -hmm. uh, let me talk. So I was speaking and I was in fact out of subject. And that's the reason I didn't make it because they said he came for a systems design interview and he didn't know what a systems design interview is. All right, so that's how I failed it. In fact, that's the reason I failed it, my uh, first thing. So um, you should uh, be prepared about that. It's, it's a big part, okay? And uh, when you prepare for an algorithmic uh, kind of question, it's something that um, you, it's not easy, but it's something that, uh, this is the way it's done. You use your data structures and you solve 1,000 coding uh, quizzes, okay, yeah. to be proficient. That's the way it is. But what happens with um, uh, the um, what happens with the systems design? Even if you're not a developer, you could possibly think of a way to accomplish something, okay, and that's an algorithm. But in order to uh, approach the systems design, you need to be very well oriented about all the kind of technologies that, and the way that you can use them, okay, in yep. order to uh, make a systems design. So uh, I urge you to watch the uh, series from uh, the free video series, but most importantly, uh, the Algo Expert one. And as I'm saying, I'm not on a commission from Algo Expert, okay, but. Um, on the algo expert there's also a crash course and there are several mock interviews like for example design youtube and you see how they unroll their chat how they unroll their interview their mock interview so that you understand what is being asked and how you would unroll your thinking on an equivalent scenario okay yeah makes sense yeah, that, that's where uh, that's where I want to ask you mostly. Uh, so yeah, yeah, what about I'll, I'll expert IO. It will prepare you for everything. All right, Th that's cool. my opinion. Yeah. All right. Thanks. No problem. Uh, okay. Please turn on your camera or, for sure, unmute yourself and uh, ask your question, please. Uh, hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, I have a question that uh, if I attend this meeting with you all, will I be able to get any certificate? We don't share certificate of uh, attendance. It's uh, just for you. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we didn't educate you over something officially to say that I am uh, officially uh, aware of what happens at interviews. It's something that it's more informal. Do we have another question? Thank you, sir. I get you. OK, great. Thank you. Anyone else wants to ask something? Anything? We have no more questions, so let me stop the recording now.